good morning to you, Trinidad and Tobago, and welcome to the Bourse Report. Today, we're taking a look at two stocks on the Trinidad and Tobago Stock Exchange. We're talking about Scotiabank Trinidad and Tobago, or SBTT, and Guardian Holdings Limited for their most recently released financial performances. In the case of Scotia, it wasn't so much good news as there was a decline in earnings per share and financial performance, while Guardian managed to be quite resilient in terms of its earnings performance, despite what could be seen as quite a challenging year in terms of insurance claims. Let's go first to Scotia Bank Trinidad and Tobago, or SBTT, and for its first fiscal quarter of 2018, that's ended January 31st, Scotia Bank recorded earnings per share of 84 cents per share, a 13% decline from the 97 cents recorded in the prior comparable quarter. Net interest income declined, sorry, rather in increased some 4.6% from $307 million to just around $321 million. But overall, total revenue would have remained quite flat on account of a drop in other income sources. Other, the other major line item included loan loss expenses, where there was actually a 60% increase in provisioning for loan loss expenses, moving from just around $28 million to around $45 million for the most recent quarter. The tax expenses also increased about $4.4 million or 6% from $74 million to just around 70, to $78 million. And that reflects a higher average tax rate, moving from just around 30% to around 35% for the bank as expected. Now, the good news for Scotia is that there continues to be trending upward growth in net interest income, despite an overall flat performance in terms of revenue. And as we can see in the green columns, net interest income has been increasing steadily. Uh, in over the first quarter of 2016 to 2017, there was almost 16% increase. However, the most recent year, uh, period and period increase from first quarter 2017 to first quarter 2018 would have seen just a marginal 4.6% increase. We spoke about other income and it has been a topsy-turvy ride for the other income category. And in fact, for the first quarter of 2018, other income actually recorded its lowest figure in the last five years of just around 124 million. Turning to the loan loss expense section, and as you can see, this may be a good predictor of things to come in the economy, where non-accrual loans to total loan ratios have fallen over the past three years from 2014 to 2016, from just around 2.1% to the middle of the graph of about 1.63%. In the, in the two most recent quarters, comparable quarters, however, there has been an increase, which could suggest that the bank is anticipating lower credit quality of loans uh, or taking a precaution. So at a price of $61.96, Scotia Bank is trading at a price earnings ratio of just around 17.2 times, above the sector average of 14.7 times. The stock does pay quite a healthy dividend when including the special dividend payouts of around 4.8%, above the sector average of just around 3.5%. So in light of the attractive dividend payments, but the slightly elevated valuations and apparent weaken, weakening credit conditions, not just for the bank, but just but overall in Trinidad and Tobago, we maintain a neutral on Scotia Bank. Turning quickly to Guardian, and for its financial year ended 2017, Guardian reported earnings per share from continuing operations of just around $1.75, a marginal 2.3% increase from the 171 recorded in fiscal 2016, which was quite a good, which was quite a good story considering the two significant events which were encountered by the company, by the group in 2017, and we're talking about the two hurricanes in September of, the, of last year. Net income from insurance underwriting activities consequently was down just around 34% from $612 million to around $403 million for the most recent period, while net income from investing activities managed to offset some of that decline, increasing some 16.2% from just over $1.02 billion to $1.19 billion, or $166 million increase. Nonetheless, operating profit overall declined some 3%, but this was offset by a lower taxation, effective taxation rate from 25% to just around 21%, resulting in profit from continuing operations increasing 
from $34 million, from $374 million to $409 million. The story of a Guardian, while reasonably positive in light of the circumstances, has been an increasing reliance on net income from investing activities. And here we can see that in 2015, net income from investing activities, as indicated by the orange bars, accounted for around $788 million, or just around 51% of overall income for the group. That has ballooned to just around 74% in the most recent fiscal year. On the other hand, net income from insurance underwriting activities has decreased in, in significance from just around 43% or $662 million in 2015 to just around 25% of overall income or just around $403 million. Now, 2017 was quite, uh, quite a, a very good year in terms of investment activity and returns overall across the globe. And the year has not started off on such a good footing with markets remaining quite choppy and it, will remain, it remains to be seen by Guardian's first quarter results, how much, of, how much that will play in to the results going forward for the year. So at a price of $15.50, Guardian is trading at a price to earnings multiple of 8.9 times, below the sector average of roughly 11 times, and pays a reasonably healthy dividend of around 4.3% on a trailing 12-month basis, above the sector average of around 3.2%. So in light of its, again, above, above average dividend yields and, below average, and above average valuations, or below average valuations, that is, but tempered by its increasing reliance on in net income from investment activities, BOSS maintains its neutral rating on Guardian Holdings Limited. That's it for this week's edition. For more information, give us a call at 226-8773, email us at invest at bossfinancial.com, or visit our website at bossinvestment.com. Have yourselves a great investing week. This has been The Boss Report.